recording. Hey guys, it's the uh, um, noon Zoom with the big team Zoom. And I was gonna do touch base on a couple of things. And I know Liz and Amy, y'all were probably on the leader call yesterday, right? Okay, and um, Rhonda, um, we have this thing, it was like a weekly star call. And yesterday the, the person who was getting interviewed um, was talking about the P's and Q's of leadership. And I just thought they were really interesting. So I thought it'd be fun to touch base on what P's she thought were important to us as both coaches and things to coach our team to as well. So I'm going to pull up my little list here. And, um, oh, before we talk about that too, um, this is, um, this is something I'm excited about. We um, are going to be a part of a competition with, we're doing the North versus the South. So we of course are part of the South being in Virginia and the um, star director teams are kind of getting pitted against one another. And if we get, if we have the biggest increase in pipeline, this is starting this Friday until the next Sunday, of course, exactly during my spring break, <laughs> is like Friday morning till Sunday, April 7th, Who, whichever, um, and it's actually a senior director team, I believe, whichever senior director team has the biggest increase in pipeline, um, gets a special call with Jessica and whoever gets second place gets a call with Danielle. So we better do that. The good news is, is that we don't technically have any senior directors on my team right now. So everybody counts. So everyone in my downline counts for us, which is a good and a bad thing. Um, it's a good thing because we need all, all hands on deck. Um, but because I'm going to be on break, I'm doing a lot of like kind of pre-recorded things, but you're going to see with your teams and I'm going to have kind of the star teams and above, I'm going to be posting numbers and updates on the leader page with where you guys are versus where you grow over the week too. So we can kind of get that fun little competition going as well. But they did this in Canada with the East versus the West and it, it was so much fun. So I could see us doing like fun videos, all very kind of Southern inspired. So Liz, you're going to have to be a transplant Southerner, <laughs> even though you're from Jersey. Um, I don't know. I was thinking about the fun. I'm going to be down in Alabama for spring break. So I'm like, I could really do some fun videos down with an Alabama twang to them. Um, so that's coming this Friday. So I have to report trunk show pipeline numbers for our team on Friday. And then I'll, I'll post what that is here. And then all the different East Coast star directors and above are going to be do, popping in and doing live videos on our team page. So y'all just, your, your job is to make, to tag your team in all the videos, get them excited, get them kind of in that competitive spirit. Um, and let's see if we can win this call with Jessica, because I think we definitely can do it. So that's coming. Um, so let's talk the P's and Q's. And let's, I, I would love to kind of dive in and get your opinion on each one too, rather than me just reading it off to you, since two of you were already on the call yesterday. Let me find my little sheet. I'm doing it on my phone so I can see you guys still. Probably, do you have the list of just all the different ones that she said, like the P's? Yeah. Yep. Will you text that when we're done to the Maven thread, just so okay. I have the, the words? Yep, definitely. Okay, so yeah, y'all don't have to write this down. So the first one is positivity. So obviously that's a pretty important one in this business. We all know when we're feeling down or frustrated or anxious or anything else, it can work against us in this business. Um, and so we have to remember that whatever we do and whatever we say to our team is contagious. So the more excited we are, it's the first thing I say on every new sales training call I'm ever on is positivity, positivity, positivity. You have to be excited, you have to be enthusiastic, and that is gonna draw people in. So when you're coaching your team, are you giving them a big dose of positivity? Are you giving them a big dose of fun? Are you giving them a big dose of inspiration? Um, because Whenever you are feeling frustrated, make sure you vent up to your upline. Um, and oftentimes it's actually, unless you really, really, really want to get it off your chest, sometimes it's better to not because when you talk about some things that are irritating you, sometimes it makes it grow. It makes it, it makes it worse. So with, but in general, vent up, not down, because whatever you say to your downline is going to be contagious and they are going to take it to heart. So positivity is probably the number one thing you can have as a coach. You know, and, and I always try to say, fill yourself up before you ever like get, go live, fill yourself up before you ever do a team call um, and with inspiration. So if you're feeling low, one of the best tools you can have as a leader is to seek out inspiration. I remember asking Mike Loner that years ago, I said, gosh, how do you do it all the time? How does every time I hear you speak, 
you are full of a positivity and inspiration. And he goes, I seek it out. He goes, I don't wake up every morning feeling like that. He goes, but I make sure I surround myself with it because the more I'm pouring into me, the more I can then pour out to others. So that's huge, huge leadership lesson. Just make sure that you are pouring positivity and enthusiasm into your team. Yes. Okay, good. Do you have a question? I want to say something. Is that okay? Oh, of course. So I just, you know, I'm, you know, I, I met Tony Robbins, you know, Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker, yeah. and, you know, he suggests just jumping up and down and, and other books that I've read too, like jump up and down and it really helps get your energy up. He's got one of those little tamp um, trampolines, those mini trampolines and he jumps on it and that just alone will get your energy up. So even if you get up in the morning and you like do a little meditation or however you want to start your day, just by just jumping up and down and just saying yes to life or yes, yes, yes. That just, that, that will lift your energy like that and it'll fill you with enthusiasm and fun. Yeah, that's awesome, Rhonda. And I remember back in the day, we used to say before you get on any kind of a call, go run a lap around your house. Like literally run a circle around your house and then blast really fun music. And I actually do that on the way to trunk shows too. I have like my go-to like pump me up songs and I will listen to them the whole way to a trunk show. And it doesn't matter what I've just left in my house, how chaotic it is organizing like sports and dinner and do you have homework and get you here? Because I mean, sometimes you walk out of the house or trunk show and you're like, oh dear God, <laughs> how am I going to go sell stuff right now? But if you listen to fun music and just get yourself in that really like party kind of fun place, you'll be in such a better mood and that contagion will like spread through your show as well. So love that advice. Um, the next one is perspective. Meet them where they are with grace and let them know that it's okay. This is huge because especially when you have a smaller team and you haven't been doing this for a while, it's a, it's really easy to put all your eggs in the basket of the people that you've sponsored. And that can do a couple of things can happen with that. Like, let's say Rhonda, for example, let's say you're going for star in a month and you've got four people on your team and you're like, gosh, if these other two girls would just do something, then I could get to my goal. What ends up happening is when you put all that kind of like all of what your goals are onto them, them, it ends up feeling very inauthentic and it ends up coming from a place of you almost kind of resent the people on your team because you're like, gosh, why didn't you just do something versus coming from a place of abundance. So just know that like, it's so good to have goals, but if the people you've talked with them, you have complimented them, you've been, tried to inspire them, you've helped them, you know, back into their goals based on their why and their needs and their wants, and you've done all of those things. It's up to them to do that. And so always make sure you're coming from a place of what you can do for them because, and here's what happens when you, because everyone gets in a situation where you do need your team to reach a goal. But if you've done, given enough sincere emotional deposits to them over their time, if they know that everything you've done for them is for them, it is to help them reach their goals. It is to help them reach their why. When you do that over and over and over and you give and you give and you give, when it's your time and you need something, they're so much more likely to want to do it than if you have come from the place of what can you do for me the entire time. So make sure that, you know, and, and I have so many great examples of leaders on our team now who if I had ever kind of made them feel bad for not doing something or if I had ever, when I look back over the day where they didn't do anything for years at a time and then all of a sudden now they're one of my strongest leaders, they probably would have walked away. If I had ever, you know, come from that place of, um, well, gosh, I don't, you know, I don't care that you're working full time. You're not doing anything. Why don't you do a show instead of being like, perfect. I'm here when you need me. Go handle all that stuff happening in your life. I am here for you, whatever you need. Don't hesitate. In the meantime, enjoy the discount and I'm here when you're ready. Um, that gives the people the grace to say, okay, like, and then, and then they flex back in. So a lot of people who are kind of feeling bad about their business or aren't able to attend to it right now for a certain reason or another, they will often come back in if every quarter you reach back out and say, I'm here. Is there anything you're shooting for? Is there any way I can help? And you come from that place of service. So you give them the grace when life is crazy and you don't take it personally and you just are there when they need you. Um, the next one is priorities, what to focus on, um, especially for a new stylist when you have all of these new people coming in, they have no idea where to focus. They have no idea what's going to make them money or they've got these, all these training videos and all these different calls to get onto. Um, and so just make sure as you're coaching them, you're helping them remember that 
no matter what else they're doing, the thing that's going to grow their paycheck and get their business off the ground is booking and sponsoring. So if you say, okay, so we all have crazy busy lives, so you can do this in very, very limited time. Just make sure the actions that you're taking are going to help you book a trunk show or sponsor a new stylist. Or you know, now we're doing a lot of more layering in sales too, so or make a sale. But in general, um, more, more action, less thinking, um, and kind of reiterating that priority message of like, what's going to help them be successful watching 5,000. Cause a lot of times people just fall back on the videos and things like that because they're scared and they don't want to take action and they can hide in that like, well, I'm training, I'm training, I'm training instead of just going out there and being like, it just, you know, giving it a shot and falling on your face. Um, okay. So the next one, parallel, paths and journeys are relatable. Co-lead your team page. This is so important. If, you're, if your team thinks that you're perfect at this and they think that you have got something special that they don't have, they will never try for what you have. So it's really, really important for them to know that they could do exactly what you do and that you get, you know, you're running the same numbers, you're getting the same no's, you're telling them kind of funny stories of, um, of things that happen to you. And, um, like Liz, I use your story all, all the time about when people just write stop or <laughs> unsubscribe, you know, people are like, Oh good. It's not just me. Like they love that. So just make sure that you, that you're kind of leading a parallel life to them, that they see that your life has got all the same bumps and all of the same, um, obstacles that theirs has, and then you're sharing with them how to overcome them. So you're not commiserating on everything going wrong. You're saying, oh my gosh, this actually happened to me and here's what I did about it. Um, and you just want to be super relatable. And on your team page, don't just run it yourself. Like get your leaders to buy in, get your new stylist to buy in. The more that you can kind of feature them and say, oh my gosh, you're so good at this. Can you share that with the team? The more likely they are to, um, uh, to feel empowered and to feel like, okay, I've actually got something special too. Okay. Peace of mind. They have what they need. That's the other thing. Like I, you know, that there's nothing that, that the top leader in the company has that they don't have. So just letting them know, just like take a deep breath. You've got this and that you believe in them. Um, be playful. This is super important. And this is interesting. Um, I, I was looking at that Sarah Blakely thing I posted yesterday on the team page. She's the CEO of Spanx. It's, it's hysterical. I'm like, how does she get any work done? Because her entire Instagram feed is her like dancing and her having like so much fun. And I'm like, she's like one of the most powerful women in the world. She's a billionaire and everything she puts out there is fun, fun, fun. And I was like, gosh, you know, it's so easy when we're doing this whole reach out thing. It's a nerve wracking process. It is like a, and everybody feels it. Everybody feels anxiety with that. Everybody feels the nerves. Everyone is worried about the nose. Everybody is worried about feeling rejected. Um, so we have to make it fun for them so that that part doesn't, it doesn't feel like every time they think about their business, it's like a big ball of anxiety. So keep it fun. The more silly you can be, the better. Um, Jenny Foley is so good at this too. She is so good about putting a leaf blower up to her face and she is so good about like being goofy and that's not everybody's personality. It's not really my personality, but just try to make it as fun as possible um, because that relieves a little bit of the anxiety that comes with the nose, that comes with learning something new and doing something outside their comfort zone. But try to be silly, try to be funny. It doesn't, you don't have to be a comedian. It's just like when we do this North versus South thing, I think we just have to have fun with it. We've got to, if we can find a big hat or like a something to just make it fun, people are going to engage more with that. So I love that reminder. And, um, and we all can do that. Okay, so pop up, obviously pop ups. This is what Jacinta's um, perspective to Danielle is that we get so focused on the thousand dollar quick start that people feel like if they don't have a thousand dollar show right at the beginning that they failed. And she's like, from her previous companies that she's come from, and she's been in the direct selling market for a long time. She's like, they really just focus on getting in front of people, whether it's virtually, whether it's at a pop-up, whether it's at a trunk show, and really doing four shows in the first four weeks. And it doesn't have to be just for in-person trunk shows. It can be, you know, do a pop-up at a nail salon, your own launch, an online show, and then maybe layer in one extra thing in those first four weeks. And just getting people out there, and all those sales are so valuable. 300 here, 200 there. All of those things are successes versus this idea about, if you don't have, you know, $4,000 trunk shows, then you failed somehow. 
Um, so just remember when you're talking to them about, um, about things like pop-ups and getting in front of people and doing the online shows and all these things, it's, it's about getting in front of as many people as you can in the first four weeks. Um, Danielle is really big on, on raising that bar again to getting in front of people, four different sets of people in the first four weeks and not doing it as four in jumpstart, but four truly in the first four weeks. Um, we just discussed a little bit and I don't know when, how fast this could happen, but someone on the platinum call had an idea of giving them a week to get their samples in and then kicking off jumpstart on like day seven, which would be amazing. So just that, cause the debate was whether or not they're talking about doing like a display, a potential display um, bonus for anybody who does four shows in the first four weeks, which would be really fun. And someone's like, well, the problem is you don't get your stuff for a week. So then you've got to squeeze in four in three weeks. And they were talking about doing it over the whole jump start. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, we really want to get back to the four shows in four weeks thing, but maybe we could do like a week buffer and where jumps, you have a week, like five days or so at least to get your stuff to you. And then you kick off jumpstart from there, which I think is really exciting. Um, yeah, I love that too. Okay. And that, well, and don't quote me on that. This is Danielle brainstorming. And that was the idea we came up with and everybody loved it. Um, but I don't know how long something like that takes. They have to fix the computers, obviously, for jumpstart and all of that. Um, patience. You can't expect them to know it all. And I get guilty about this sometimes. I, I mean, after doing this for 10 years, it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, if I have to answer how to book a trunk show one more time, I'm going to shoot myself. But we have to remember, just because I've been doing it 10 years, this person, they're brand new. They don't know. So even though I've said it a gazillion times, they don't know that. So just take a deep breath and be like, patience. Like it's not a stupid question because I had the same question when I was in their state of business. So just remind yourself every time you're like, you know, you kind of want to giggle or be like, Oh dear God, like that you are going to have to, as part of this business as a coach, you are going to have to say the same thing over and over and over and over again. And you don't ever want to make them feel stupid for having that question because we all had that question. So just patience is a virtue when it comes to coaching. Um, Pride, sprinkle recognition like confetti. Every time you see a new stylist, like Rhonda, I would go on and do a big congratulations to, um, uh, what's her name, for doing her show. Even though she had 20 people there and only three people ordered, I would make a big deal about it. Be like, oh my gosh, you know, blah, 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 blah. make a big deal. Like on Southern Charms or to her personal Yeah, page. absolutely. You can do it on her personal page. Like be like, oh my gosh, you have done three events in your first three weeks. Like how amazing are you? Blah, 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 blah. Sprinkle it like confetti. Just to ask, ask yourself that. Am I looking for things to congratulate? Am I looking for things um, to, to kudos someone on? Um, and then questions, ask lots of questions, ask them questions because they have got all kinds of fears that, um, that you'll never know if you don't ask. So ask questions and then listen to them. Um, and then finally, possibilities. Are you, um, the speaker on the call yesterday talked about Cindy Rode Hamill sitting next to her at an event and she goes, here's what I see for you. And she's like, I, it would have never occurred to me to go for that until she saw it in me. So make sure you're dangling what could be and what you see in them. And, you know, like last night on the, on the, um, new stylist training call, there was a stylist under Julie Krause and she was like, I don't really know what I want. She's like, I, I want to do well with it and blah, 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 blah. And I used to be a teacher and I just moved to Nashville and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, you know what? We usually probably go for a star because, you know, you're a, you are a teacher, so you're going to be a great coach. It's working 10 hours. She was like, I want flexibility with my kids. I don't want to, you know, work a crazy amount of hours, but I want to do well with it. And she's like, okay, that's my gold star. <laughs> and like, just to make sure you dangle out like what you think that would be a good fit for them and what you think that they're capable of because a lot of times they won't think that for themselves. They won't know it until somebody else says, I see this in you. Um, so throw it out there and, um, and just let them know you believe in them. So that's kind of the gist of the leaders. I think it's such a good reminder, especially right now. So we've got people kind of coming back to life out of the woodwork from the winter slumber. We've got new stylists on the page. So just a good reminder of all the things we can do to kind of re-inspire our team and to be a really good coach and a good sponsor for our team. Um, I know definitely personally, I forget about some of these from time to time. So I, th I thought, I thought it was a really, really good call. Um, and then, so what's happening with you all? What's, what's happening? We've got like 10 Hi. minutes. Kelly, can I piggyback on that before we wrap up? Oh my gosh, please. I'd love to hear what you have to say. 
Okay, first of all, I love, I mean, I'm, I took so many notes. I know you said not to, but I don't even care. I took all the notes. Um, <laughs> I love all of it because you're right. It's like, just like with like our business, it's, it needs to be balanced. You have to, you have to do all the things that you can't, you don't have to be good at all the things, right? Like you're going to be really good at one thing or like kind of okay at one thing that you need to work on. So I remember at Welcome to Leadership two years ago, Danielle said, um, you know, it's really easy to look at all these things and being like, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 and all of them. And I'm going to be really good at all of them. She's like, but that's not realistic. So if I could put a challenge out there for everyone, um, that's what we did with a similar activity at Welcome to Leadership to highlight your top two, like one or two things that like you think you're really good at, like looking at this list. I think I'm good at A and B or whatever, like knowing what you already have under control kind of, and then you like doing more with that, like just going balls to the wall with that because it comes easy to you. And then highlight the other two things or one or two things that you think you're worst at, like least like you or like things you need to work on the most. And that can be what you try to pepper in and work on as, as time goes on. So you don't have to be good at all the things tomorrow. Um, but focus on things you are good at and recognize the things that you do need to work on to be able to like eventually balance that back out. Um, and she said, if it's the thing that you're worst at, like delegate or find someone else who is good at that and work with them. Like it makes no sense to do it all yourself. So like Kelly, you said you're bad at patience. Girl, I've got all the patience in the world. Come talk to me. <laughs> but from teaching high schoolers with questions like, wait, so what? are there things smaller than inches? And you're like, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> so, you know, like finding someone who is good at what you're like negative. And like you said, kind of co-lead, like work with them, even if they're on a different team, different downline, different, whatever, like who cares? Finding someone that with that balance that works well with you can kind of help build the other skill back up. All right. I totally love that. I think I'm going to post that on, my leader page um, and then I have everybody post what their strongest two and what their weakest two are and what they can do to like you said um, kind of blow up at the good stuff because I remember hearing that once that people always worry about improving what they're bad at instead of maximizing what they're good at so I think both are important I think it's super important to maximize your strengths and um, really kind of put those in overdrive but then also like you said pace with somebody or you know watch somebody who has what you want and the other skills and then just mimic that behavior. And yeah, so and if you post it and everyone comments what they are, then we can really easily team up too and see who's who's got the skill you need. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great idea. Love it. So fun. That's a great idea. Um, okay, so North versus South coming up. We're going to really maximize that. This week's sponsoring. So we're on our little workshop call, obviously going to do um, – uh, reach outs today. So I want everyone on the Zoom to commit to opening with the opportunity. Yes, we need to book up April. We've got an insane trunk show week this week. The last week of March is packed with shows. Um, but it takes a nosedive on April 2nd, which is crazy because we've got this amazing new line. So we definitely want to focus on building up our April, but let's open with the opportunity because ideally if we could sponsor people this week, get them launched the first week of April, we could have a lot of big promotions in April. So I want to kind of get this Maven group too. We're getting now into the kind of the promotion months. Um, so I want to, let's focus in on our teams. Let's see how many new people we can bring on this week because we've got a lot of shows. We're in front of people. And even if you don't have shows, how many reach outs can you do with open focusing on the opportunity? And then filter those into a bunch of new launches in April and, um, and kind of really get strategic with promoting and, and setting goals and that sort of thing. Um, okay, so what else is happening? Any questions, Amy or Rhonda? Anything y'all can think of? Amy, if you have your little buddy with you, you don't have to be off camera. We can see him. Sure. I think she ran, he was um, screaming, so she ran off. Oh, hello, there she is. Oh, wait, I think you're muted. Oh, we can't hear you for some reason. Oh, I'm mute. Oh, my goodness. Parker, say hi. He's an applesauce face. I love no? it. Hi, cutie. <laughs> Are you going to smile? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. He's showing That's off. That's amazing. That's amazing. I get to see him on Monday. I'm so excited. Wait, how, do I, 
Yeah. Wait, I'm trying to put my camera around. Come on, guys. Kelly. Okay, so I was going to ask you guys, um, what, so in terms of, for this MAVEN program, I was getting ready to kind of go through and run numbers and, and kudo the people who are kind of tracking to the four shows and one new person every month. What do y'all, do you guys like that we're not, we're focusing more on coaching and learning and growing, or do y'all want some stronger accountability? Like, I would love to hear that because I want to make sure that you guys, I know that's an important piece of it to like, you know, if you know there's like, you know, we're never going to talk about it, then you don't even have, have to worry about it. But what do you guys think about that? Like, I didn't love the, the, the filler thing that was kind of a pain in the butt, but I do, I think I, I'm going to start like looking at numbers harder and, um, and, and start just doing shout outs. And I'm going to probably do most of it through the leader page because everyone in this group's on my leader page rather than trying to find an alternate place to post. Yeah. I, I know that I personally, like I, you can ask Liz, I think I did the spreadsheet for like three weeks and then I just, I couldn't keep up with it. So I've unintentionally fell off of that. Oh, I'm sure. I think everybody pretty much has. There might be like a random few, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I personally love kudos. Like words of affirmation is my love language. So that's what I give the most like with my team. So I know that for me, like a personal message from someone saying kudos or like when Jenny does her top 10, like seeing my name up there, that makes me feel good. So maybe doing that. I like your idea of doing it on the page because I know sometimes the chat gets really overloaded, especially for the women who can't get on during the day. So I like having it on the team page or yeah. like your, your group. Okay, perfect. And then how do we feel about, I know we talked about doing um, a spa day at Hoopla. So are we thinking, I was just looking at the agenda that came out. Um, we're all pretty much packed from Thursday on. And I feel like Sunday could potentially be an easier, like get up at Sunday morning and do it together. And then people who want to fly out that afternoon yeah. can do it. Does that sound good? Please, 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 please. Have you looked at flights from Richmond, Liz? Is that something that, um, like had uh, any Sunday night flights? Well, I haven't looked yet, but we're also staying. My aunt um, lives in um, like right outside of Denver. So my actually my parents are going um, and my in-laws. We're going to do like a whole week vacation around it. So I haven't looked at flights just for the hoopla dates yet. Okay. Because I'm flying at different times. Um, but yes, to spa day on Sunday, please. And if the requirement is still to the book four and, and sponsor two thing, um, I'm not going to be there, but if we could like tailor it somehow. <laughs> well, no. So Liz, what I said I was going to do was if you achieve all of that every month, then I cover your massage. But if not, you just pay for yourself. So everyone who's a part of Maven gets to come. <laughs> you just buy your own massage. I love that idea. Like a Maven spa day. <laughs> I know. It would be such a fun. We're going to be go, 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 go too. Wouldn't that be a nice way to end hoopla with like a massage? <laughs> so many mimosas. Yeah. Yeah, and we can even, if those who end up staying an extra night, we could end up going out to the pool afterwards. Like, out. if it's cheaper to fly on a Monday, I'll just fly on a Monday. Is it bad that I'm more excited for that than Hoopla? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, saying a lot, because Liz loves Hoopla. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm so excited for all of it. I just, I, that's like, Amy's talking about kudos is her love language, like, spa days and recognition and, like, chilling and relaxing and, like, girl time like that is totally my love language. Like, I am all about that. Like okay. that she can treat thing last year drove me so hard. I didn't get it, but like that was a huge like drive for me. Um, so to have something like this is really cool. Okay. So obviously, I'll put, a reminder, I'll put a reminder out there about that that we're doing that. So when people go ahead, because I know people are registering now, and you, you guys know who blood registration, it, the price goes up after thirty first. How do yes. you know that? Yeah, I know. I just someone just said it to me this morning, and I was like, oh crap! So I'm getting on to register right now. Um, so Kelly, how are you? working that with your newer stylists because I obviously know everything to say to like pump them up to get them excited about it but for someone let's say who signed up like a couple weeks ago and you're like oh hey now you have to drop another three hundred dollars to go to Google right now like this week you know what I mean yeah it, it's only a twenty percent uh, or twenty dollar increase um so it's not if they don't know that they want to go right now that that's okay but I would start building up fun, girl's trip, fun, girl's trip, fun, girl's trip, empowering, leadership, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Really focus on that side of it. I think that makes a big difference for people. Um, but also help them get to associate and jumpstart because that's free registration. So that's, a two that's, that's another 260 something dollar bonus. That's the yeah, that's that I'm doing with all new stylists. Anyone who joins and they're like, well, what is Hoopla? I'm like, all right, well, let's get you associate styles so you can go for free. Just, just do it. We'll think about it later. Yeah, totally. Okay. 
um, yeah, so that's kind of the angle. But I mean, honestly, like Jenny in the beginning with me, she was just like, we're going. And I was like, what? She's like, we're going. We're booking it. It's just a girl's trip. It's been fun. <laughs> you know, so I think sometimes we focus so much on the like pay for this big training when oftentimes it's the girl's trip angle that really gets people there. And then they learn a ton and make more money and everything else. Um, okay, cool. All right, guys. Well, let's pop off then and we'll pl hop back on anyone who needs to book and sponsor. Hop back on with me. I'm going to go grab, make a quick salad and get on here and just power through. Like I need to sponsor. I do not have, I've had all these shows in March and I have not sponsored squat. So I've got, I was looking at my hoopla numbers for sponsoring and I almost died. It was bad. It was like, it's probably my worst ever. Like I've, I've signed on all these girls and not a lot of them have qualified. So I am determined. Why to is that, Kelly? What do you think is holding you back? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Clearly, I think it's, uh, honestly, I think it's how I'm saying it. I'm not talking about it enough, but I think it's, I am, I am going too much on the style of steel angle and I'm having a lot of kidnappers. So I've got to get back to talking about opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're devaluing yourself. Totally devaluing myself. I'm, go I'm going for the easy route. We had a big, you know, a year there where we signed up all these girls with this stylist deal and then they ended up launching. Well, I've had several who were like, no, nah, I'm not going to launch. And I'm like, wait, but remember I said to do one show? And they're like, eh, I'm not going to do that. And I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I know I've got to focus on that because I'm like, I, I cannot show up at Hoopla with my sponsoring numbers right now. So uh, check out Hoopla Report if you don't know what yours are. Yeah. So I, you know, I had a, I had a pop up and it was like four hundred and ninety eight dollars show. So all we have to do is sell two more dollars in two weeks, which will sell more than that for it to be a qualifying show, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. And you know what? If you have outside orders, we've got all these fun things right now. Throw them on there. Like and if you've got any outside orders, put them on. You know what, K Kelly? That I didn't know or I'd forgotten, and because is that I had my iPad on Dottie. I had a woman who wanted to buy $60 earrings, but it was back ordered. So um, she's like really old, but she, she's already, she bought a lot of stuff, but um, we weren't able to order the Pegasus earrings because it's back ordered to April 8th. So after she'd already left, I went on my computer and it allowed me to add the order. But when I was using my Dottie, it didn't. And I didn't know that. And I would have already had that on there. And now for some reason, her credit card will not go through. She's 94 and she's had a stroke. But she's she's beautiful. She's a wonderful little lady, and I want to get these to her. But um, I don't know what to do. I mean, like hopefully she'll go back into Have that. You her? Have you called her, Rhonda? I, called her. I spoke to her sister. They're like, "This is your problem." I, so they gave me the card. I don't know because I tried it so many times, it locked me out. I mean, I've tried to put it in, but it was the same card. She's got tons of money on it. I don't understand the problem. But I would call Delight Center and see if they can place it for you. I did, and they said after.